The Fed unveiling a new plan this week to jumpstart the struggling U.S. economy. It's called Operation Twist. It's actually an extension of a program already in place since September of last year, basically selling short-term debt and then buying longer-term treasuries. Here's uh, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke explaining the thing. I think we can lower interest rates more. Uh, but beyond that, uh, Operation Twist and asset purchases work also through other channels, in particular by acquiring securities uh, in the market and bringing them onto the Fed's balance sheet. We essentially uh, induce investors to move into substitute securities. Okay, so with interest rates already near zero, will Operation Twist actually encourage businesses and consumers who aren't borrowing now to get off the fence? Ed Butowski is managing partner of Chapwood Investments. It's always a little confusing for me when I listen to the Fed chair or any economist use these fancy terms, because right. to be honest with you, it's very hard for the average person to understand. So Operation Twist, what does it mean for my pocketbook? It, it really doesn't mean a lot. I mean, what, what, what is happening with Operation Twist, and it's very important for people to understand, it's real simple. What they want to do is bring lower bring a long-term interest rates anything that's not really zero to one year out down and they believe that they can keep those rates down you'll start to see um, l literally more borrowing that's going to take place so the idea is that if you reduce the interest rates you reduce the you know basically how much someone has to pay to borrow money for a long period of time that might induce people to start borrowing it hasn't worked yeah. at all well, if it hasn't worked, why do they think that it might suddenly start working? Well, I'll tell you, because, you know, the, the Fed only has so many things that they can do. They, they can actually go out and print money. We hear about that. It's called quantitative easing. And that means printing money and putting it into the economy. And people believe that quantitative easing three is on the horizon. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and but up until now, what you literally have is the, the Fed out there trying to do everything they can possibly do. But there's one thing, Rick, the elephant in the room is this. If we now change and start to cut corporate taxes, cut taxes on individuals, we need to stimulate this economic engine. The United States is the third largest, uh, excuse me, is the largest engine in the world, the, the largest economy. If you take the next second one, which is going to be China, then you take Japan and you take Germany combined, they don't even add up to as big as the United States. So what we have to do is get that economic engine going. And the only way we're going to do that, in my mind, is to cut corporate taxes on individuals. We have to cut as well. And the other thing we have to do is get rid of regulation. Same thing I've been saying literally, Rick, for two to three years now. You sound like uh, the Republicans in Congress. That's what they talk about wanting to well, do. Well, let me tell you, what else do we have left? Because what we're doing right now is not working. We all see that. It started to get a little bit better at one point. Now things aren't working. And now we have the world economy, not just the United States, starting to suffer. So we do have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to take advantage of what we have at our resources right now. And that is cut the, the things that are keeping the economy from growing. And I know I sound like the Republican Party here. But guess what? What's happened so far isn't working. And when doing something that's not working, you need to pivot and change direction. Almost hit the control off delete button right now. You mentioned foreign countries that and everybody is very familiar now with the meltdown right. that's going on overseas in Europe. I've been reading about problems in Asia as well. Some some real growth problems in, mm -hmm. in Japan and in China as well. Is there a way for the U.S. to capitalize on other people's misfortunes, not that we want to seem to be, you know, uh, right. you know, a cavalier about the whole thing. But isn't that what businessmen do? They they sort of see somebody else's misfortune and they figure out a way to make a profit off yeah. of it. And, and I think that's a great position and a great way to look at it. At, but before we can do that, we have to fix our own economy. Once our economy is fixed, then we can go out and actually start to take market share. If you want to look at it from a business standpoint, Rick, we can take market share away. But but. The world is connected. I mean, there's four engines in the, in the world. You have uh, you know, North America, you have Europe, you have the emerging markets, and you have Asia. And none of these engines are working very well. The Asian, Asian, excuse me, the Asian engine is doing fairly well. The emerging market engine isn't doing well because it's mostly commodities. And Europe, we know what's happening there. The United States, North America can get its act together. Mm -hmm. We can then start to go out and really start to sell our products around the world better than we are right now. Usually when we chat, you're far away you're in Texas. Right. Nice to have you here next to me. Well, it's have nice you here to be in here. the studio. Ed Matowski, managing partner of Chapwood Investments.